Post Automation is the key to bridge the gap between user expectation and speed of development. So first of all, what RPM is? Anyone is aware of RPM? Sanjini has mentioned that it is a wrapper on Selenium. How actually execution you know, goes through? It is to automate mobile apps. So you know that uh, Selenium cannot automate mobile apps. And the apps can be native app, it can be web app, it can be hybrid app. So there are three types of apps in the market. Okay. And you know, as you know that the app demanding of mobile apps is becoming you know, very it's in demand, it's in trends, okay? Everyone has lots of apps in their mobile. And of course testing is more required now. It is kind of mandatory stuff if you are launching any app in the market. So for that, of course Selenium cannot do that. It cannot automate your apps. So for the Appium comes in. Appium is also an open source. But how it actually works? Did they develop their own tool? No. What they did, they use Selenium. What they said that, let's use Selenium. Selenium will be interacting with Appium. Selenium script will be interacting with the Appium and Appium will be interacting with UI Automator and Apple Automator. I think this is what we say. So it will interact with both of these tools. One tool is provided by Google and one tool is provided by Apple. So what happens is, you know, when Google has launched their Play Store and when Apple has launched their iTunes or wherever, whatever their Play Store, Play Store is. So, of course, they are putting lots of apps on their Play Store. So first, before putting the, your apps, whatever you develop, they test it. Whether your app is eligible to be placed or to be published or not. So in that case, uh, they have come up with their own tools in the market. And they have their tool actually. Okay, like here what I have mentioned. But what Appium done, Appium, you write your scripts in Selenium, Selenium interacts with the Appium, and Appium converts your scripts into that particular form. So whatever the language that tools understand, they convert them, and that's how this tool has come up. So actually this tool is doing nothing, it, nothing. it is, you know, working as an aggregator between these two tools. Okay. And that's how Appium become very famous today. So mobile devices are uh, increasing exponential. exponentially. Testing mobile apps can be very complex and expensive apps need to support various operating systems and their different versions. To improve time to market and quality of an app, mobile test automation is necessary. There are a lot of open source tools for both Android and iOS for native web hybrid application and that are Appium, Calabash, MonkeyTalk, Robotium. So if I talk about Robotium, uh, not, not Robotium, if I talk about Calabash. So in Appium, the added advantage is it can accept multiple languages. But Calabash does not accept it, cannot accept that multiple languages. So in Selenium, as you know, that we, uh, it can it accepts six languages, six programming languages. In the same way, you can use those programming languages while using Appium as well. But in Calabash, you cannot do that. That's the reason I would say your Appium is somewhere is ahead compared to other tools. Let's move on to the next slide. So what is Appium? Cross platform solutions where you write tests for multiple platforms. So you can write tests for Android, Windows and iOS. There is no dependency on mobile device OS. It supports multiple languages. It allows execution on actual devices and simulators. Correct. Philosophy for Appium. Test what you release, any language, any framework, standard API on open source. So as you can see that, this is what I have mentioned to you as well. Appium uses vendor provided automation framework. This requires no compilation of the application. This means you are testing exactly the same application without any changes for the test automation to work. 
So what happens is Appium interacts with the UI automator by Google. It interacts with the XE test by Apple. It interacts with the window app driver from Microsoft. And that's how it can automate all three platforms in one go. Appium uses Selenium WebDriver APIs for all the frameworks. Appium uh, WebDriver works on client server protocol that is JSON via protocol for communication. One can use any this to write your test cases what client libraries are available. One can use any unit testing framework so if you want SNG, JUnit or anything like that you can go ahead and use it. Appium extends WebDriver and provides additional APIs specific to the mobile test automation. So of course that's, that's a valid uh, you know step here that's a valid point that when you use Appium when you use Appium library it gives you some added classes added methods which is specific to the mobile automation that is swipe because in mobiles you do swiping tap because in mobiles you do tapping so there are many things which are specific to the mobile apps which is being provided by Appium library. Selenium WebDriver is widely adopted in the market for test automation and this reduces the learning curve for testers. Because you know Selenium WebDriver now, you can easily switch to Appium because there is not much with what you need to learn. WebDriver is also W3 standard. Appium is an open source framework which is the best part. There is a large community contributing to its enhancements, absolutely. So even if you face any issues, you will get an answer easily from anyone from the community. You know, there is a very big community of this Appium. There is a good support from vendors as well, Apple, Microsoft and Google. So of course, you know, they will always keep their automation tools up to date and that somewhere help you out itself. Correct? Because Google, as Google launches their new operating system, they will make sure that their tool, which is used for the automation or for the testing purpose, it works perfectly fine with the new operating system. So you know, the dependency that as soon as like here uh, in Selenium, we'll always have to see, we'll always have to make sure that our Selenium libraries are up to date with the Firefox version, you know, and with the Jekyll drivers and all those stuff. But here, everything is on Google. If they are launching a new browser, they should have their automation tools updated. So there is a good support from vendors. How the Appium works, like I mentioned here. So Appium acts as a server that implements WebDriver. So Appium is a server here. It is written in Node.js. Test scripts were, are executed by sending HTTP request to Appium server using JSON via protocol. So here, some way or the other, they are using Selenium Grid. Some way or the other, they are using traces of Selenium Grid. Because what will happen, or if I had not say it as Selenium Grid, and if you have heard of Selenium RC remote control, this is how what the philosophy they are following actually. Because your script sends the commands to Appium server, which converts that command which is acceptable by the phone devices. And this is what your remote control server used to do earlier, you know, back. Results are sent back to client post execution. So what is UI Automator? This is provided by Google and which is the tool being used by Appium. It is the UI testing framework mainly used for cross-app functional UI testing for Android apps. It is a Java library containing a set of lightweight APIs that help to build UI test to and to interact with elements in user apps and system apps. So guys, if you, if you know, if you don't know, let me tell you, there are two types of apps. One is user app, one is system app. System apps are those apps when you buy a new phone, the existing apps which is pre-installed that is called as system apps, which you cannot uninstall, I would say in that term. And user apps are those apps which you download explicitly and which you can uninstall. Those are called as user apps. Assist, uh, user apps correct. It is one of the best tools for testing Android apps. It is bundled with Android SDK. It is good framework to write black box test. The test code does not interfere with the application implementations. It supports Android version 4.3 and above. So currently we have, you know, Android 8. So of course, uh, below this, I don't think so anyone needed. 
and then it says it provides a viewer UI automator viewer to inspect element locators. It provides a set of APIs to retrieve state of application and perform action on apps on a device. It also provides a set of APIs that support cross app UI testing. Android SDK. So whenever you want to work with Android apps, you'll be needing Android SDK, and this is what you download from the Google site. It helps you to ins uh, so there you get UI Automator Viewer. Okay, so let me show you. So when you install Android SDK, actually, and uh, this uh, you know when you download SDK, there are tools that is called UI Automator Viewer. When you click on it, so this is the SDK what you get from Google itself. Correct. Uh, it is used for development of apps, and it is actually used for the testing of the apps now as well. If your device is connected or if you have created any simulator, then you will click on this link and it will detect your mobile app screen or mobile phone screen. It will detect your screen and will show you all the steps right, all the screenshot right here and on the right hand side it will show you some, you know, uh, hierarchy of code. So I'll show that to you. Like this, can you see that? Here is the app the screenshot, and here you will get all the, uh, you know, in a I would say in a child parent child relationship, you will find your notes, and on the bottom, whenever you move your cursor on any of these elements, it will show you all the details of that element. That the ID of that element is this, the class of that element is this, the package of that element is this. Okay. The index is one, so it will tell you each and everything of that particular UI. So to launch the UI Automator viewer, I have already launched it. So in that, it is saying that go to Android SDK Tools Bin Directory and open that. And in that, you will find here click device screenshot, which is this, this one, device screenshot. When you click on it, it will actually take up the screenshot of your app or of your device whatever the home page is and then it will show the properties of the element wherever you move your cursor like uh, in firebug you move your cursor on any element and it will show you the properties it shows you the code of that particular element in the same way it will show you the properties of that particular element so here they are just showing you as an example that how it looks up you can see that on the left hand side when they move their cursor on this, it will show you all the details of the section right on the right side. Now, uh, they are also talking about the desired capabilities. So, first of all, to be precise, it is important that you Appium, just keep that in mind that what it does. Because when you talk about Appium, you will need to download Android SDK. With that, you will get Android Studio where you can write your code. In this, you will need to learn that how you can create simulators with the specific configuration. Then you will see Appium server you will download the appium server and do the settings in the server then you will pick the android apk file and you will see that how you can get the details of that apk file of the application then see ui automator Viewer so that you can locate elements and then you will start writing your script. So, these are the things what you need to do, okay? Before you move on to the desired capability, which I am just going to show you. So this is just to give you an overview, I would say, okay? Uh, that's why this is being covered here. So, desired capability is a way of specifying the Appium server capabilities we need in the target environment. 
Since Appium caters to Android, iOS and Windows, there are a different set of capabilities for each. So just now in uh, Selenium Grid, we have seen that, uh, what we have seen in Selenium Grid, that you have to set the platform, you have to set the browser name, browser version, etc. In the same way, when you will be going to work on Android, these are the settings what you need to do. So package, activity, if I tell you about these now, you might not be able to understand, but so package in Java is having different different classes. In the same way in Android we have a package where you are having different different screens. We are having different different screen and each screen is called as app activity. So this is wait activity, wait package, this is device traded, timeout, Android coverage. So these are the basic activities they have mentioned that what you will be needing in order to set up your browser in Apple. But nevertheless, you will, uh, you know, when you will be able to set up all those things, you will easily be understand, you will easily understand all these what they say actually. Okay. So, that's why I am not going inside this desired capabilities because without implementing it, there is no use of going to each and just giving it a name and if I, you know, call out the description. So, there is no point. But yes, if you have anything specific to ask, that uh, how Android works, how we need to install, from which uh, website do we need to install, is there any option with Eclipse, etc., then of course we can take that up right now. Itself. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.